Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here at Star Cottage Studio in lovely Ligonier, Pennsylvania. And I hope you all have been well and that the start of your week has been awesome. Uh, if you're watching, let us know. Say hi. Say where you're tuning in from. It's always nice to kind of break the ice and get chatting. Uh, if you missed it this weekend, we had the great bead extravaganza, which is one of my favorite things that we do throughout the year. We do it four times a year, and up next is the spring fling later this year. Um, and yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, we hope you all had a good time. Um, I'm still catching up on some of the replays because I was out of town. I was traveling to um, a conference in North Carolina. And um, yeah, so I it, it was a little bit of a juggling act. I won't lie, we had some hiccups along the way. Uh, but we figured it all out, I think, knock on wood. Uh, it's already done, so retroactive <laughs> knock on wood. Um, but yeah, so we had a presentation. It was interesting because I was away and William was here. And so we had to triangulate things, but it worked out. You may or may not have seen the back of the hotel room and heard some of our neighbors in the background, but it worked out. All right, I see a couple people watching. Marianne's watching. Hey, Marianne. She says, hey, Andrew, and hey, AG Bead fam. Uh, Fran's watching. Hi, Fran. June's watching. Hey, June. Yeah, so we have been super busy. We're getting ready for Tucson, which is our next big thing, which is happening sooner rather than later. Um, I was had full intention of staying up last night and working. I got home around 8 o'clock last night. I was like, I'm going to go to the cottage. And then I put on soft pants and I did not go to the cottage. I went to sleep, uh, which thankfully the trip up was not stressful. There is a part in West Virginia where we're going like 30 miles an hour behind the semi, um, but it was fine. So, yeah. Uh, Amanda's watching. Happy Tuesday, Amanda. Veronica's watching. Hi, Veronica. Cheryl's watching. She says, hi, Andrew. I got my gorgeous order from AG today. Awesome. Um, and Facebook user says, yep. Once the soft pants go on. Yeah, it's like the, the universal sign to uh, take a moment and relax. Um, so yeah, so we've been getting ready for Tucson. Um, I've been playing catch up today, which has been slightly hectic. Um, I usually check my email, uh, throughout the day, every day, all day. Um, and I haven't been doing that. So my email looked pretty horrific this morning. So if you're waiting on a response uh, from me for something, hopefully I got back to you. If not, um, I will soon because I'm working my way through them. But I did try to um, respond to anybody who, um, you know, doesn't normally email me. And sometimes I, I shouldn't say that. I should say that there I get a lot of not necessarily spam because I signed up for it, but I get a lot of emails from a lot of different businesses and not all of them are like critical for me to look at. So I tried to go and sort through the ones that, um, that I needed to address right away. So hopefully I got to you. If not, I'm still, still working through it. Um, Marianne says, or the bra off. Well, I don't wear a bra currently, but I was joking around that with William that I, I might have to start soon. And But that's a different story. Um, Harry's watching. Hey, Harry. Um, uh, Zochi is watching. Hi there. 
Um, Linda's watching. Hey, Linda. Yeah, so we had a busy weekend this weekend. If you placed an order, thank you so much. Uh, for all of those who took advantage of the coupon code, I don't know if it's still active. I don't think it is. Um, William would know that. Um, if you took advantage of that, thank you so much. That helps uh, take some of the stress the stress off of the Tucson trip. I always feel like this before a trip is like super like frantic. And then when once you get on the road and you can't really turn back, then it kind of melts away from me. But um, up until I get on the road, it's a little bit stressful. So um, all, every sale helps and it definitely helps me not freak out so much. Um, we had a, had to get our brakes redone while I was in North Carolina, and of course, that's that's always less than good when you have to do car repairs when you're traveling. Uh, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been, and we were all safe and sound, so that's what matters. Um, yeah, William said it's over. Sorry. So if you missed it, sorry. I don't know when the next one's going to be. Maybe I'll have a, a break sale or something. I don't know. We don't do too, too many sales. Some people, they do sales like every other day. I can't personally keep up with that, but, um, you know, needs must, right? Um, Jermaine is watching. Hi, Jermaine. Yeah, so we're super excited to be here. I'm super excited to be back in Pennsylvania for a couple of days before I have to leave and head back down to North Carolina. We're gonna pick up my sister, Cynthia, and my niece, Azalea Bell Ogden, and we're going to go head west. We're heading west, y'all, and we're going to the annual Tucson Gem Show. We're gonna be showing in three places, maybe. Uh, two for sure, one for maybe. And um, we're still figuring out the logistics um, I think everybody, I don't know, yeah, ha, have you been feeling the franticness this year? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But a lot of people that I've worked with are have been, like, they've just been burning that candle at both ends. And so we're like, oh, well, uh, hello, everyone. We're going to do something. And so, uh, yeah, so there's one event that we're kind of borderline on the fence about, um, but I won't get into that. Um, but yeah, so we're super excited. It's going to be a fun trip once we get going, once we get going. Um, all right. So today, if you're new here, I know we've got a lot of new people who found us during the TGBE and are not part of our regular AG bead fam. If you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining us and being a part of our, our little online corner of the world. So thank you for watching. My name is Andrew, Andrew Thornton, and I'm the co-owner and creative director of Allegory Gallery here in lovely Lagunier, Pennsylvania. Me and my husband, William Jones, own it together. We also own this building, which we are in right now, which is called Star Cottage Studio, and we're in the bead room. And we also have another building in Johnstown, and that building is going to be a gallery sooner, maybe, we'll see. Um, our 2022, we were like so hopeful that with as kind of the COVID restrictions were easing that we would be rebounding, but um, it was not as bonkers as we would have hoped. So we're kind of having to take things slow and steady. I like to throw it all in and just go full steam. Uh, but when there's not that much steam, you, you've got to, uh, you've got to, I don't know, steam accordingly. That's going to be a t-shirt. Um, William says, some people said they missed out. So maybe 
we'll do an extended stay, sale. Stay tuned to your email or text if you're on our list. See, William's so nice. Me, I'm like, well, oh well. But we do, um, we, um, we are uh, getting ready for Tucson. So we're super excited about that. I, I learned some things over the weekend. Some, some interesting, interesting things. Um, and it sparked a lot of interest in my brain hole of things to do in the future. And I'm being vague because I don't really know um, yet how that's going to manifest. You know, I th the seeds have been planted. And so, yeah, so the seeds have been planted. I've learned some cool techniques and I've started some conversations with people that I think will eventually be pretty useful. So keep an eye peeled for that. Um, Teresa's watching. Hey, Teresa. Um, one thing I will say is that if you like these live at fives, five issues, I should say live at five ish because we didn't start at five today. Um, if you like them, head on over to our website, allegorygallery.com. Um, and if you are so inclined and of, of, of the disposition to do so, find something that speaks to you and adopt it because it will allow us to continue to uh, go live. Keep going live. Uh, Janet's watching. Hi, how are you? Yeah, so... During my presentation, during the TGBE, um, I talked a little bit about sculptural elements um, using flexible beading wire. We made this bracelet. You may notice that I'm covering up certain parts of it. Um, and because I did it differently during my tutorial, because why not, right? Um, and one of the things that I mentioned while I was doing this was making sculptural components using flexible beading wire. And I don't think that's like a thing right now. I haven't really seen anybody doing it so much. Mostly what I see is people using it as a stringing material um, pretty, pretty much in the way that it was designed to be used. And um, maybe there's people doing stuff, but I thought that it's like anything. It's like a tool or material. And really what you do to it will change how it, you know, how, how it's used and utilized in your work. So um, I was thinking about this the, some of the times. My car ride companion probably was like, why is he so quiet? And I was kind of you know, fiddling things in my brain hole with how to do this and do it in a cool way. So I don't know if this is going to work, y'all. In theory, it should work. But I'm taking principles from seed beating and using this kind of in a bootleg way with flexible beading wire. So we'll see if it actually works or if it looks like a hot mess. If it looks like a hot mess, we're just going to learn together, right? We're going to experiment and see how it goes. Um, and if it works out, then awesome. We, we are victorious. If it doesn't work out, oh, well. I'm not going to lose sleep over it, as they say. But I think everything is about a learning kind of thing. And instead of doing something... Uh, that I'm 100% positive about that you may have seen already. I thought it might be fun to do some exploration station and try something new. And if it works out, then we're going to, we're going to learn together. So yeah, Helen's watching. Hi, Helen. It's been a while. Actually, it's not been that long. It's been like a week. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and then we're gonna start working. How about it? I know generally William, he likes to do the talk talk in the beginning and then gets down to it, the nitty gritty. Um, but yeah, 
we're going to just jump into it. You're going to see the ceiling for a little bit because I, we, I haven't figured out how to make it not show the ceiling. Um, I'm sure there's people with like all of the technology that they know how to do all the things. Um, I'm not one of those people. So we're just going to roll with it and you're going to see the ceiling and then you're going to see my beading table. All right. And I'm actually going to adjust the stand a little bit so that it's not super, super high up. Um, my chair is super low to the ground. I feel like I'm in a low rider car. Um, and the table's super high, which would be great if I was sawing. But since I'm not sawing, um, you know, it is what it is. All right. So the first thing we're going to need is some beads, y'all. Williams used all of the, all of the containers, all of the bowls. So I've got this. It's a cap to an old pill bottle that you saw me use the other day as a mandrel. Actually, I didn't use the cap, but I use this. And then I'm going to pour out some uh, size 8 metal seed beads. Um, size 8 O rather, uh, metal seed beads. I love them for using as spacers. They're super versatile, I feel. And yeah, I love them. So, and then I thought it might be fun to do something kind of mixed metally. So I'm going to use these crystals and they are like a gray crystal with a gold wash on part of them. And so they've got that kind of mixed metal. These are a size eight um, millimeter uh, faceted round crystal. So I think that'll be good. One of the reasons why I'm using this is because it has an ample standardized hole um, with some things that doesn't really matter. And maybe if I had the six millimeter, I would have probably used the six millimeter. But for um, for demonstration purposes, I think it's good to have it so that you can actually see it as opposed to it not being seen. So in theory, I, if I did this for myself, um, for my own kind of designs, I would probably use a slightly smaller sized uh, bead. And that way uh, it's not so clunky monkey um, and clunky monkey style. It's um, a little bit it's a little bit more usable for what I do. But if you like big beads and you cannot lie, feel free to use a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, however big you want to get, you could you can do it. Um, though I will say you might have to experiment. This is an experiment. Um, I don't know if it's going to work out. I'm hopeful, but if it's not, then, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I can still play around with it. All right. Um, Diane's watching. Hi, Diane. Janet says, nice ceiling to see. Thanks. Clem says, roll with it. Susie's watching. Hi, Susie. Yeah, so there we go. Um, so a part of doing this, we're going to need flexible beading wire. Why, yes, we do. We have that. We have that in our arsenal to use. Um, let me grab it. Um, and the flexible beading wire that I'm gonna use is this metallic um, soft wax. Whoa. It's this, it's a medium gauge, this one, medium, 26 pounds, tensile strength. So I'm going to be using this. I like soft flex. If you want to use a different kind of wire, you can use a different brand. 
Um, but I like this one. I use that primarily for what I do with stringing stuff. We're gonna need some kind of ruler or um, tape measure. So I have my tape measure and that's what we're gonna use since I have that. We're also going to need our crimping pliers, crimp tubes. Where are the crimp tubes? They're hiding. Um, crimp tubes, I'm calling you. Red Rover, Red Rover. Crimp tubes come over. In theory, I have a big bag full. Um, since I don't have the big bag full, I've got these. The, and I think that should be enough. And we'll need cutters. I like these because it makes a nice, crisp, clean cut. Um, so you don't, I think it's important that when you're using this, you get good, clean cuts. If you don't, then it makes it harder to pass things through whole, multiple strands through holes. Cause it kind of gets bushy on the end and then it doesn't want to go through the hole together, you know? So sometimes it's good to have the nice sharp point. Um, and the only real way to get that nice sharp point is to use good cutters that you can kind of cut at an angle and that will actually cut, okay? Um, Cause these ones, these cutters I've got, they're a wee bit dull. And um, because of that, and it kind of makes a bushy end. And the bushy ends don't want to sit well together. They're like, I'm not, I'm going to do my own thing. You're not the boss of me. Um, and then I'm like, actually, I am the boss. So you have to do what I say or else. And then it says, I quit. And then that, there you go. So that was the long way of saying use nice cutters that can produce a nice clean cut and one thing you can do um to see if your cutters are going to do it sometimes people use cutters for things that they're not rated for um and what that means is is that they cut things they're not supposed to cut um with their cutters and it may work one time but it can chew up the blade and then it makes it dull and then not very good to cut. So sometimes people will use it to cut really heavy gauge wire or they'll use them to cut um, memory wire. And basically that's like taking money and throwing it in the fire. Um, so don't throw the money in the fire, use it on our website instead and buy stuff instead of throwing the money in the fire. Um, but you don't know until you know, right? Cynthia says, I actually broke cutters trying to cut heavier gauge um, than it was rated for, which happens. And sometimes what happens, um, metal def um, will get what are called stress fractures. So it may, you may cut and cut and cut and cut and it will be fine. And then one day it just snaps. And that's because sometimes what happens is it will compress the molecules in that one little spot and if you do it over and over and over again it will create a stress fracture and the metal will actually snap off so uh there you go um i see a couple people um mary marianne says yeah memory wire is a bear to cut now i I sometimes don't recommend getting more tool. Okay, I do always recommend getting more tools. I'm not gonna lie. I was gonna be trying to play it like like some minimalist monk person who has like four pliers and that's it. I got about 50 pairs of pliers. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm gonna own it. I am who I am. That's who I am. Anyways, so if you can invest in it, they're super cheap. Get memory wire cutters. It will change your life. You're not going to be struggling. You're going to be so happy because they have a shorter um, cutting radiant, ra radius. And so what ends up happening is it has a higher torque factor and it can cut a lot easier and cleaner through the steel. So it's steel on steel and um, it shears the metal as opposed to cut it, which is a little bit different. Um 
I don't know if that's a good way of describing it or not. I'm uh, probably making stuff up, but it sounds good, so I'm going to roll with it, all right? Um, so get that memory wire cutter. It'll change your life. Um, and yeah, but we're not going to use memory wire today, so you don't have to get it today. Uh, Marion says you can use a hacksaw to cut your memory wire. Yeah, if you want to, you you can use a lot of different things. You, um, I would, I will just say that a memory wire cutter is way easier. Is <laughs> you're not gonna get the blood time, and it'll be great. I mean, if you want, you could use a jeweler saw, um, but a memory wire cutter is just like, loop, and you're done. But anyways, I digress. Marianne says, "Great, Linda." Ju but just about ready for a nap. Oh, they're chatting. Um, Linda says, I use my jewelry file to sharpen my cutters. I learned that from my dad who made knives um, for a cutlery. That's cool. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, all right. So the next thing we're going to do, we've got our flexible beading wire. We've got our crimp tubes. We've got our small beads. We've got our large beads. Um, I like to have on hand um, some uh, pliers because the plier tips are smaller than my fingers and they can get into places that look at this bean pod that I found. I found this while we were in um, in North Carolina, it kind of looks gross. It's not gross. It's kind of neat, but it's called a Kentucky coffee bean pod. And I was like, Whoa, what's this pod? I'm probably doing something very bad by bringing it back to Pennsylvania, but it's just for me to look at. So I'm not going to like damage the ecosystem by throwing it out in the field and watching it grow. All right, so I've got my chain of pliers. These are going to be helpful to kind of get into places that I can't uh, fit otherwise. Um, so I like that. I think a lot of times people struggle with simple stringing because they don't have the right tools or they try to skimp on how much wire they use, which is understandable. When I first started out, I was super frugal and I tried to use every single millimeter of wire that I could. Um, the only issue with that is that sometimes if you don't leave yourself enough clearance on the end, it becomes a headache. Um, if you give yourself just a little bit more space, uh, your life will be so much easier and you can fly through projects as opposed to really struggling to try to get that little two millimeter tail to stick through that crimp tube. So I know that it's tempting, you know, it's tempting to try to use the shortest piece possible and not trim any excess off. But I'm going to tell you, if you like the quality of your life, and to do things and do them where you're not pulling out your hair. I can, I don't have any hair to spare. So this, this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all the true, true. I'm telling y'all the true, true. Um, just give yourself a little bit extra beading wire and it will save your life. Or your hair follicles. <laughs> All right. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm going to get these out, this, this spool of wire, and I'm going to kind of just, I don't like the wire to go all over creation. So I, I just kind of put, put that thing once they get it, the end loose, and I'm going to leave it so that it put, put that guard back on so that that I can pull out it if I need it, and I can, uh, you know, I'm not going to be stuck to it. All right, so I'm going to use these, the copper crimp tubes. 
Um, one, the other tip that I'm going to give you that's going to change your jewelry making life if you didn't do this already is always, always, always buy the best crimp tubes you can afford. Even if you can't afford them, save up because uh, if you use base metal, base metals um, like tin or pewter, they are soft, um, which in your mind, you're like, oh, they're softer, which makes them means that the, I'm going to get a tighter, tighter uh, crimping. Um, no, that just means that they're eventually they're going to wear out. Um, and you're adding stresses to them using the pliers. So copper, sterling silver, uh, gold filled, look for those ones because, um, or, you know, plated silver or plated copper are fine. However, if you use the, the cheap um, crimp tubes you, and your uh, pieces fall apart, that's probably why. Um, when we used to do more repairs in the shop, that was the number one repair, is that people would use cheap, cheap ch crimp tubes, and that would make their pieces fall apart. So if you don't want your pieces to fall apart, use the best crimp tubes that you can afford. And I would, and copper crimp tubes are super affordable. So use those if you are interested in having things and it may not fall apart today it may not fall apart tomorrow but it will eventually fall apart because things fall apart says chinua achebe all right so the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to string up one of these crimp tubes all right and then I'm going to string up half an inch of, um, of these uh, copper size 80 seed beads. Now, because we are, since I don't have these on a strand, I can't do the pinch an inch technique, which makes things go a lot quicker. So I have to go one at a time. And once we get a measurement down for how many this is, it, it, we can use that. We can use that technology of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So for half an inch, there's approximately one, two, three, four, five. Now I want to dispel a myth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm gonna dispel a myth, y'all. I'm going off script, so I hope you don't mind. Not that I had a script because we're just. Ex experimenting together today. But if I did have a script, I would definitely be going off script today. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, wait, as I, as I just unstrung all of those, my myth busting is not going so well. All right, so I've got six beads, size 80 copper beads. Um, the myth is, is that the eight aught beads or is because you could fit eight beads in an inch. And that would be, um, you would have eight beads per inch is why they have the eight O. Or you would have six beads be per inch if you had a six O. Or ten beads if you had ten O. Well, if this is half an inch and there's six, that means that to have a full inch, there would be 12 or even 11. So that's not really the real, that's not real, okay? So whoever started that, maybe that's the way it started off in the early times of the of this um, of beating and they had to do that. If you heard that, but guess what? It's not real because every company is different and not everybody has the beads fit that way. So just so you know, 80 is not always going to fit eight beads per inch or 10, 10 O is not going to be 10 beads per inch. So there you go. So I'm going to string up one half inch of 
these uh, copper beads, which there were six, six of these. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my crystal end and I'm gonna string up one of these, all right? And then I'm gonna string up six of these, or I'm gonna actually string up 12. What 12? 12 of these copper CBs. One, two, y'all gonna have to help me count. Two, three. I'm gonna put Marianne in a concussion with my my slow counting, like counting sheeps. Um, and then five, and then six. Now these ones are a smidgen trickier to um, string up. And one of the reasons why is that because um, there's not like a cylindrical tube, you kind of have to find your hole on the other side. So it does take a little bit extra. So it's seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. 11 and 12, all right? And then the next thing we're gonna do is string up another one of these crystal beads. And then we're gonna have to string up another 12 of these beads. One, two, three. At this point, y'all can talk amongst yourselves. What are y'all having for dinner? We're still figuring that out. Probably spaghetti or chili. Or maybe we're going to have Cincinnati-style spaghetti with the chili on top. I didn't know about that until my adulthood. And at first, I was like, I don't know about that. But now I am intrigued. I'm intrigued. I might, we might do that. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. All right. Are you feeling sleepy? Are your eyes getting heavy? Your eyelids getting heavy? You're ready for the nap nap? Um because I'm about to put myself asleep doing this. But, you know, it is what it is. Teresa says, salmon in the air fryer. That sounds good. One. And we're stringing up 12. Just in case y'all are wondering what's happening. Um, two, three, four. Five, six. Now, if you're curious about this, um, earlier this last year, I was lucky enough to do an artist in residency at Contemporary Craft in Pittsburgh, um, which was a really life changing um, event for me as an artist and a maker. And they have just announced that they are offering two artists in residency with uh, a stipend for a place to stay. Um, before, you kind of had to be local. And um, now they're giving you money to cover your rent for the amount of time, which is awesome. I think it's pretty awesome. I'm like, maybe I'll, I'll um, apply again. Um, because that, that going back and forth every day was a little bit hard for me. But now that they have that, it's pretty awesome. So if you're interested in that and you're like, I want to do something different, uh, you might be interested in Contemporary Craft. Um, they have two new residencies this year, and both of which include housing, which is pretty dang awesome. It keeps getting better and better. Two, four, six... Eight, who do we appreciate? Um, 10 and 12. There you go. Eight. 
Um. Oh, I see. Marion says she might have Cheetos. We'll see. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. She said she also has beef stew. Um, Gum Nut says that um, they have crispy salmon, skin salmon, crispy skin salmon with salad and hot chips with chicken salt. Um, that sounds cool. Teresa says, I'm having vegetable stir fry. Susie says, I have no idea what's for dinner. Maria says, what's chicken salt? Uh, Amanda says, we're making our own personal pizzas. That sounds fun. Linda says, I splurged and made a New York strip steak on the grill outside with mushrooms. Fancy. Susie says, what are you making, Andrew? I came in late. Um, I'm trying an experiment. This is an experiment. So um, you'll just have to bear with me. Um, and the experiment is we're going to make sculptural components. And I kind of figured this out in my mind conceptually uh, using seed beading techniques. So I don't know if this is actually going to work. If it doesn't work, we're just going to have a lot of beaded circles. And then I'm gonna re I'm gonna change the name of the title of this thing and it's gonna be called Beaded Beaded Circles and um and everybody's gonna go along with it and nobody's gonna say anything about how terrible it was, okay? Um Cynthia says that sounds good. Um Gumnet says, Yeah, Marion, it's salt mixed with powdered chicken stock. Hmm. Is that like a Lowry seasoned salt? Um, and then I had green beans with vinegar for lunch, though, to be healthy, I guess. I don't know. Um, all right. So let's get back to it, y'all. So currently we have four little segments here and we're going to string up six more of these, um, seed beads, these metal seed beads. Um, and that's going to close up our piece. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. So what I'm going to also do, um, Gumnut says that she doesn't know what Lowry is. I, I can tell you now from the South. Um, that this is a staple of the Southern cuisine. Um, anyways, so here we go. This is approximately six, six inches long, all right? That's approximately six inches long. So because I don't want to make myself go crazy, I'm going to make sure that I have enough on this tail end to go back through. So we're, I'm gonna tuck that in my the back of my mind for a future um, because some of the projects that we're gonna do are gonna be a little bit easier um, if you um, do it a certain way. Um, as a, And what I'm doing right now is I'm working off this spool. And so because I'm working off this spool, it doesn't really matter um, but later, if I cut pieces off the spool, then, um, then it, it's different. All right. So if you're not familiar with crimping and crimping with crimping pliers, I've got uh, a, um, a crimping plier. There's a whole, uh, there's a notch closest to my hand, and then there's a notch closest to the tip. The notch closest to my hand is going to make the taco. The notch closest to the tip will close the taco up. Um, so I want to make sure that my wires aren't crossing because like if you cross the streams and Ghostbusters, it can make some bad times. So you don't want the bad times. Um, and what I mean by the bad times is that sometimes if you cross wires while you're crimping, what can happen is that they can cut each other inside of the crimp tube. So you think you're set and then all of a sudden it falls out 
well, there you go. That's why. Or it could be one of the reasons why that happens. Um, so I'm going to close this up and put that in there. All right. And then I'm going to turn it on the side to be the one closest to the tip. And I'm going to close that taco. All right. And then I'm going to get these, my cutters and my flesh cutters. I'm going to go real close, real close to the 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 wire just make sure you don't cut the um, the main wire because if you cut the main wire then you're gonna have to restring everything and um we don't got time for that y'all you know we don't have time to you know we have other things to do in our lives um all right so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to cut off approximately eight inches of this wire I mean, I could do it less, but I'm, I think it would be better if I do it off of the spool, all right? Now, this is not gonna be perfect with, and I probably should have accounted for the crimp tube, um, but maybe it's small enough that it won't matter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick one of these beads, one of these crystal beads, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flexible beading wire and I'm going to fish it through one of these crystal beads. All right. And I'm going to find the ends and I'm going to match those ends up. All right. So I've got what looks like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to string up six of the beads on this side. One, two, well actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna string up an inch of beads. So that's 12 beads. One, two, oh my gosh, we're gonna be counting all day. I, I feel like Count Chocula. That's three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and then ten, eleven, and twelve. Let me check my numbers, see if they went down. Oh, they went up. Y'all must really like counting. Usually we get like 20 people watching and I'm always concerned that they're going to get bored to tears. Um, and this is also a good project if you have a bead stopper, if you're of the clumsy variety. If you are not of the clan of the clumsy, then you should be fine. But if you are, then you may consider in your life adding um, some bead stoppers to make sure that... Um, it doesn't affect you. But, and then by affect you, I mean, so that later on you don't have to go on the ground and be picking up beads with tweezers. Um, not that anybody does that, but you know. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, oh, my friend, my friend Windbent. Yeah, the count, count it out. Yeah, there you go. Is that like a, another thing? I was watching this show and they says, pour it out. And that's when they would have like their, their therapy with a margarita time. But anyway, there you go. So there's four on here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, and twelve. So, in case you were wondering, Win Bent was my roommate, my uh, my for my trip down south. So she's seen things that probably she never wanted to see behind the scenes. Um, 
and we hung out all weekend and I don't think we have one picture together. I think it's like a mysterious, we'll Photoshop something together, Lennis. Kristen says, looking good, Andrew. We'll see, we'll see if it turns out. Um, I see a, a lot of comments, but I, I'm, I'm so focused on getting this done. All right, so next up is um, we're gonna do 12 more beads. Um, and if you do wanna go to that symposium, Let's all go together, and it'll be so awesome next year, y'all. MLK weekend. It's always MLK weekend. So there you go. Of course, it's always right before Tucson, so that's kind of the headache maker. Um, but um, if I plan ahead in advance enough, then I'll start working for Tucson like right after this Tucson, and then I'll be ready. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is string up 12 more of these seed beads. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, and then 12. All right. Is this it? Let me double count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Bingo. And then the next thing I'm going to do is string up one of these. And so what I'm basically doing is kind of like right angle weave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it be a circle like so. So this side, I'm gonna have to string six beads and this side we're gonna str string six beads and then we're gonna have a total of four beads each kind of unit, all right? So I'm gonna string up six beads on this side. One, two, three, four, 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 five and six awesome and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to string up a crimp tube and then i'm going to sit string up six on this side and then i'm going to close up that loop and in theory that's going to give me one complete unit around this sculptural component all right and uh, the cool thing about this is that with sculpture, it's like a building block. You can add and change this as much as your heart's content. You could make a whole entire segment of these or, um, you know, you do what you want and maybe do this on a smaller scale if you want. I think smaller could be cuter because this is a little bit Jumbotron, um, but, um, you know, it's up to you. You can make ginormous things. You could make skyscrapers out of this. I don't know if anybody could climb up King Kong style on your skyscraper made of beading wire, but you never know until you try, you know? It's like what Kevin Costner said, if you build it, they will come. Maybe that's not a good thing for OSHA, but whatever. All right, so enough free associating two four six and i'm gonna put this in there we probably didn't need any inches of wire but like i said earlier um i don't i'm not having to struggle i could probably do it on seven inches let's do seven inches next time so we don't waste as, as much wire i gave myself too much wire but now i know how much to to cut off so i'm just closing this crimp tube up just as I did it the other time. Um, I always like to give myself a little bit of extra room. And the reason why there's a little bit of extra space is that when I put my crimp cover over this, um, it's going to take up some of that room. And I, if you have ever strung too many beads on too tight, you'll know that's a recipe for breakage. So I think that's one of the things that I had, it took a while for me to kind of learn conceptually and that's that 
sometimes you have to give yourself space, um, especially with these kinds of designs, because um, if you don't, what's going to end up happening is that you can string up too much stuff and then you have either a very decorative beaded bookmark or you have an actual usable, flexible thing. And the thing about that is if you don't give yourself enough space, you're not going to have the same flexibility. So a millimeter of flexible beading wire is, you may not think very much of it, but that little tiny millimeter can make a huge difference in your design. So just tuck that under your hat and keep it for a rainy day. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to cut off another segment of um, seven inches of wire. Let's do seven inches of wire. And again, I'm cutting this at kind of an angle, and that's going to make a needle for me. So I don't, it's nice and pointy. Maybe the blood time. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do. Uh, I see, I see somebody, um, when Ben says AG bead fam descends on the metal world. One lady says, I am metal. So I made the horns and said me too. And she wasn't amused by me. Oh no. Well, oh, well, you know, some people are funny and then some people are not. So there you go. All right, so I've strung up my seven inches of this through the corresponding. So here, so I'm going in kind of, what we're basically doing is creating a right angle weave situation, except we're not weaving. Um, and the reason why we're not weaving is in theory, I could do this as a right angle weave kind of situation with a beading wire. The only problem is that um, you, you have to pass through your holes several times. And with a flexible beading wire, it's a little bit on the thicker side. So if you pass through several times, that can kind of create some stresses on the inside of the bead. And then also you fitting those, those wires in so many times in the hole will make it crazy making. And instead of having fun and, and enjoyment in your life, you're going to have the tears uh, of sadness, of infinite sadness. And, you know, nobody wants the tears of infinite sadness. So um, don't do it. And there were, uh, there were a lot of, um, there were a lot of beaters at the conference. So don't, don't let that let that confuse you. Even though there were a lot of metalsmiths there, there were also a lot of people working with all kinds of um, materials. My friend Adrian works with uh, rubber grapes. So, um, you know, if you work with some different al alternative materials, this could be an interesting thing for you. Um, because people were working with grapes, you know. How often can people say, you know, that their medium is rubber grapes? So two, four, six, eight, and ten. We're just stringing up twelve of these. I didn't count for y'all because that may get a little bit boring. You'd be like, oh my gosh, she's counting again. Uh, and then be like, at least you can count to twelve, right? I once had a job where I was a manager of a restaurant and I, I told my boss, I was like, well, I can count to a hundred, but anything above that, um, is not great. And they looked at me horrified, but then I was like, yeah, I make a stacks. And then they were like, what? And then anyways, it's not to say that I can't count to more than a hundred, but um, usually I like it to count to like 20 and then make stacks and then I can just like, you know, pick up the money that way. But I haven't had to handle that kind of much money in a long time, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and that was like 20 years ago, so whatever. All right, so yeah, we had a lot of fun. 
two, four, six, eight. Um, there was a ton of enameling stuff going on. So if you were into enameling, that is that might be for you, right? Um, Sandra McEwen was there, and I had a little fangirl moment. I was actually too shy to go up and introduce myself because I was like, I watch her on the internet all the time. And then I didn't want her to get it where she was like, you know, I don't know, no, no, no. So I was too shy to go up. So anyways, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So it was nice. So was, I had fun. I learned a lot. Um, That's about, um, I, I think the weather is changing here. I can hear it actually outside the window. So if I cut out, um, that might be what that's from, unfortunately. All right, so we're gonna keep doing this, keep counting. So our next thing is, is I'm gonna string up 12 of them on this side. And what you're going to notice is I'm going to alternate the sides that I'm doing, I'm adding the crimp tube. And the reason why is that when you're thinking about something structurally, um, if you put all of your, your connections on one point, that's where it's going to pull the most if that makes sense, that's where the weak spot's gonna be. So if you stagger where your weak spots are, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have the ability to kind of disperse the, the pressure. And that's going to make for a stronger piece if you think about it. If, if you put the crimp on this side, then you're gonna to wanna to do it on that side so that when later on, it'll all kind of balance out in the end, right? So that's two, four, six, eight, nine, and 10. And then I'm gonna add two more. And then I'm gonna add um, one of these beads on this side. And then I'm gonna string up on this side, I'm gonna string up six beads on this side and then six beads on the other side with a crimp tube. So I've got two, four, and this is six. And then we'll put a crimp tube and then close that up. All right, so this is not the most exciting of techniques, I realize. Um, but I think it'll be fun once once you see the magic. Once we, once we go vertical, y'all, right now, it's not, not, you'll be like, oh my gosh, why did I spend all this time watching this business and he's just stringing bees on the thing? Um, and, you know, I feel that. I, I've been in demos where they keep doing the thing and you're like what did i need that in my life for i did not so two four five and six bingo 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 all right and then what we're going to do is if you are feeling like you don't have enough room on that side you can always adjust the wire because even though i've kind of planned this out where it's um where it's where I find the center and kind of pull up, it's not always going to be centered because I'm working off to one side, right? So, um, so yeah, so you may have to readjust it if you find as though you don't have enough room on one side. So I gave myself seven inches and it seems like that's plenty. All right. Sarah says, I think it's really pretty. It's going to be more pretty, Sarah. It's going to be so cool once you see the, the magic, the 
the skyscraper magic, y'all. I'm going to call it that. It's going to be skyscraper magic. That's what we're going to call this design. Skyscraper magic. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. If it fails, it fails. That's the other thing. One thing that I realized is that I am not always committed to successful outcomes in my experiments. And that may seem wackadoodle and actually kind of counterproductive. But the thing is, is that sometimes the things you learn from the most are your failures. So sometimes I set off to fail so that I can... Um, so that I can learn more about the nitty gritties of different uh, properties of materials or techniques. And I know that sounds weird and really counterproductive, but uh, it's true. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'm like, I'm going to have to bite this by the bull, the, take the bull by the horns and um, yeah. All right, so I cut off seven inches of flexible beading wire and I'm stringing it through this speed here. So one, you know, it makes a line. So it's not like you're completely surprised about where the next loop goes. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna string up um, three B or I'm gonna string up 12 beads actually 12 beads who am i kidding i'm not i'm not kidding anybody um 12 beads count chocula let's, let's hear the countdown four five six in theory it goes but these ones like i said because they've got a lip inside of the beads they don't always want to go on as smoothly as if it was just like a regular seed bead so um, there's that, but I mean, it doesn't take that much longer, so it's not too bad. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Night, night, everybody. No, I'm gonna try to keep it from being the, the counting sheep channel, you know. But, you know, I, maybe that will make more money. You just, I would just count, read people, the phone book. I had a professor once said that they read the, read the phone book straight through, but they also were in a altered state. So um, I can't uh, condone that activity. She was like, yeah, I was doing the speed and I uh, decided to read the phone book. And it was in New York too, so the phone book at the time was like massive. So anyways, don't do drugs, children. Um, so there's four, five, and then we're gonna do six. And then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. This is why I'm not a seed bead teacher. Um, Cheryl said, this is very zen. Um, okay, we'll roll with that. This is your zen project for today, y'all. ASMR. Um, on the, to cap those 12 off on each side, I'm going to put... Um, uh, I'm going to put those bigger beads. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to string up 12. We're going to string up. Let, let me count this. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to attach this. So I know I'm going to need at least 12 on this side. Um. And that's going to be what I'm going to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, and 12. All right. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this side over and I'm going to pass it through here. What? I'm not going to just make loops all day. No, I am making loops all day. But um, we're going to put this through on this side and hopefully it's going to go. Here we go. Bingo. And then I'm going to string up six beads on this side and then six beads on that side and put a crimp tube. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, and then on this side, I'm gonna put six more beads. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, and then I'm gonna put a crimp tube and I'm gonna close up that crimp tube. Now, if you had one of those magical crimping pliers, you could do like a ravioli time style, but I am not really good at that. So um, I'm gonna leave that to Sarah and Kristen, the ravioli making. Um, I have one. I, I it looks like um, it looks like a chewed up booger when I do it. So I just do it the way that uh, I know will work and not look like a chewed up booger. So um, there you go. So crimping plier time. Make the taco. Close the taco. Sarah says she'll teach me in Tucson. That will be fun. All right, and then I'm just trimming off the excess. And so right now I have this, it's very weeble wobbledy. It's very weeble wobbledy. But this is where I've got the basic shape, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another loop on each side, but I'm going to do the loops he through here, all right? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need six inches or seven inches of this flexible beading wire. And I'm going to start off doing, um, I'm going to cut off this flexible beading wire. And you can see I measured that so good. I precisely eyeballed that so hard. No, I didn't. I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't do it. All right, and then I'm going to pass this through. What? What's he doing? I'm making stuff, y'all. I'm making stuff. And so I'm just going to string this up so that you get the concept of this. You're going to have to put beads in this. You know, I guess you don't have to necessarily, but um, it makes it more rigid. But this is what I worked out in my brain while I was staring at trees and traffic. Um, and so I was basically right angle weave, but, um, or is that, what is that? The cubic right angle weave? Is that what it is? But with beading wire. What? Is that even real? It is today. Maybe. I made it up, so it could be wrong. Um, so basically that's what I'm doing. I'm making this structure and you can... If you make this smaller, it will be more of a scale to jewelry, and you know, and you don't have this great big size. Um, but you could also put something, when you close up this side, you could put something inside of here. So if you made a smaller one of these, you could just make smaller and smaller and fit them inside and then have this be the, the super sternal um, cage that traps everything inside of it. So I think it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a clever idea. We'll have to see if it works, uh, if it actually works or not, if it will have this structural. I think it will. I think it will, y'all. Um, 
but you know somebody says how do you get off and on it's not a bracelet it's gonna be a bead we're making a ginormous bead that's as big as my head in theory you could put use this as a bracelet but if you if you made this as a bracelet it has the same look of this so actually you don't really need to do it as complicated i bet you could maybe if you wanted to you could probably figure it out so that you made this part without having to do so many crimp tubes um and uh, you probably could make that part using this kind of configuration if you had planned it out that way you know you know what i'm talking about so if you were doing this um you know you could probably figure this out so that you only used one one strand and wove this in there but you would put different instead of just two beads here you have four beads and then figure it out that way and i bet you that would work instead of having to do it in segments the way i did it but um you know that's the thing as i'm just experimenting so i don't know if i'm coming up with something new or if somebody's been doing this for a gajillion years but if they have i haven't seen it so I've seen the seed bead version of this, but I have not seen the uh, flexible beading wire version of this. So, um, all right, two, four, two, four, five. I don't think that's how it goes, two, four, six. And then we'll add six more. All right. And of course I'm working that sometimes you have to work bigger. And then once you figure out um, on a bigger scale, because sometimes what, what happens is if you work too small to get your ideas out, sometimes you'll, you can't see what's actually going on. Like you won't actually see the idea of the con like the concept of it. Um, if it's too small, but if you work larger the first couple times and then you scale down your design, that's one way that you can do it. So you can conceptually work through the logistics of how the wire is gonna work and what ways that you could do it and how you can do it better. Um, so two, four, six, all right. So I'm gonna pass this through on this side. And that's gonna act as kind of like my beads stop. I know y'all, we're going over an hour, but that's fine. I don't have to, nobody's my boss. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. And then we'll do nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right. So again, I, it's not the most like revolutionary idea, I guess, but I've never seen anybody else do this like this. If you have, let me know so that I can feel bad about myself. Um, but here we go. See, are you starting to see it? Can you see it? Um, and the cool thing about this is that because it's such a large shape, you can do things within that shape. So um, this is kind of like a foundation where you're building a structure that you can bead on top of. Um, so if you want, if you're worried about, if you wanted to do right angle weave with gemstones, for example, if you wanted to do that, sometimes you can't do that when you are working with, like normally when you're doing this in seed beads, you have to do it where all of the beads are all relatively the same size 
Um, and I think this is an idea that you can, as long as these beads have ample enough hole to go past through several times, um, at least two times, then you'll be good. So in theory, you could use gemstones instead or chip. Um, so you could do something that's more freeform and less uniform, as long as you have the right measurements. Um, so I did, I count to 12, but if you miss the beginning part, the way that I came up to the number 12 is that I measured this out on my ruler and it was 12 beads per inch. So if you wanted to do something where you um, do something with an organic shape, like chip or, you know, a regular I don't know, nuggets or something, you could still do it. You just have to measure it out and make sure that it's relatively even when you're doing it. Otherwise, it's going to be very lopsided. So two, four, six, eight, ten, and then twelve. Um, Zoe Chi says, in miniature, in order to make better items in normal size. Um, that's an interesting theory, Andrew. My aunt went to a class with a nun who learned to make flowers with glue and white filling from the baguette. She was told that she had to learn to make things miniature and in, in order to make, uh, better items, normal size. Um, I think it's all about how you, you know, it's like both. Like when you make things larger, you can see what you're actually doing. Um, and then you can build muscle memory when you're making things tiny. And then when you scale it up, it will, um, you know, you'll have those muscle memories and it'll be a breeze. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then I'm going to go and pass this through this speed. And so, I, I mean, I think it's a cool idea. It's like a sculptural idea. I don't really see too, too many people doing a lot of sculptural work, um, but uh, with, with like flexible beading wire, but I think it, it lends itself to that, you know? You can do that if you wanted to do that. So I think it's possible. Um, so Bonnie says, that's when I run into trouble, the holes. Yeah, so you have to think about it where when you're, when you've got bigger, when you've got a bigger uh, gauge of a string material, and right now I'm just stringing up six of these, just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Uh, I'm stringing up six of these seed beads on this side, and then I'm going to do six on the other side and a crimp tube. Um, but when you're when you're working through these ideas, I think it's important to give yourself grace um, and be open to the idea that there will be failure. And if there is, that's not necessarily the end. Um, I think it, it's in our culture and society, we're very um, driven towards results. And, you know, I don't want to just waste things to waste things, but I also understand that, you know, sometimes you have to break an egg to make an omelet. Um, and so, you know, to find new pathways of doing things, um, I've noticed this a lot, and especially in the beading industry, is people get super upset when somebody else copies them. And one of the reasons why I can understand that they are frustrated with that is because they've spent the time and the energy to develop this certain thing and um, somebody else is taking a shortcut. Um, so I can understand how it's frustrating. Um, sometimes when I see stuff like that, I get a little bit frustrated. Um, but ultimately, I think it's one of those things where you you can see things i call it the rootless tree um if you have the root system in place and you have the theory behind it down pack and you have the knowledge behind it 
then you'll have a, a tree that has a nice deep root system. If you have a system that is something that you've copied off of somebody else, uh, particularly without permission, um, then it's but a rootless tree. And so whenever anybody has any issues, the moment that they start prodding it, um, the tree just falls over. Um, because, you know, they don't understand the concepts behind it or the history behind it or where things evolved from. And so I think it's one of those things where you don't necessarily have to have that, especially if you're following a pattern, um, which I think is a great learning tool. Um, so don't get me twisted, y'all. Don't get me twisted. Um, because I know that sometimes people be like, oh, no, he didn't. He just go and go and told all these people off. No, I didn't. Um, so this is what we're making, this giant cube, basically. What do y'all think? Do you think that looks like garbage? I think it's cool. And the cool thing is, is that you could use this as a link in a chain, too. So um, you can get a lot of volume. And I think that that's what I was thinking about when I was making this design is that you can get volume out of this that you wouldn't necessarily get otherwise, you know? So the next thing I'm gonna do, if I'm not gonna put something in there, I think that could be cool though, a great big flocked ball or something like in here or a felted ball. Um, Cynthia said, if you make it a bit bigger, you can make it into a bracelet. Yeah, you could. But I think that there, this is a building block. So um, I'm not going to put anything in the inside of this. Um, I hear somebody. Hello. Stranger danger. Don't be a rootless tree, y'all. Don't be a rootless tree like that Damien Rice song because you're going to get knocked over <laughs> and end up in the road. I like what you're making so far. And you're not bored to tears listening to me counting? No, I was actually laughing. You're pretty funny today. Oh, am I? <laughs> it's probably because I've been getting more than three hours of sleep. He's probably likes that talk. Like, I'm much more pleasant when I actually get sleep. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Normally, I'm like, what did you do today? <laughs> oh, my gosh. How much money did you make me? <laughs> um, And then I'm like, and let's laugh us on today. Let's have some laughing fun times and not crying times. Um, huh? Do you want to take a break from me talking, counting? I'm going to just keep going, y'all. Y'all saw how I did this the last <laughs> time. So, but William's going to show you. What am I going to show you? <laughs> what he, your pieces. I don't think you showed them yesterday. These? Yeah, your pancake dye things. No, I just showed them the dye and how it works. So here it goes. He's going to show you. <laughs> so we showed you the pancake dye yesterday. If you saw my video, I think that was yesterday. Uh -huh. um, and so we showed you that ginkgo leaf. And this is the cutout that I made. Hello, everyone. This is the cutout I made. That's William, by the way. In <laughs> case you're like, is he doing ventriloquism? Who is this? So I used, I think this is 20 gauge. He got a side piece. I think it's 20 gauge copper. And I used that pancake dye like I showed yesterday in the hydraulic press and went whoop and stamped these out. And then they come with all these burrs around the edge. So then I sanded down the edges. That looks good. And then I, it comes with this little foot that sticks out. So I hacksaw, not hacksaw, jewelry sawed that off and smoothed that out. You used my jeweler saw? I did. I did. I couldn't find any other blades, but I didn't break that one. Oh, so. good. Because <laughs> I'm like, where are the other blades? I cannot break this blade. There's a caddy that has them. <laughs> oh, okay. So I cut that off. And so I made this shape, 
I've made a few of this shape already. And these are just, um, these just came out of the pickle and they've been washed with soap and water. So that's why they look like this. They're, this is not the finished product, y'all. Hey, have you um, ever heard of the golden clear? The golden clear? I think that'd be beautiful on those ginkgo leaves. There's, I've never heard of the golden clear. You gonna have to ask our friend Jenny to show us the secret. The secret. So I think Jenny D Benedict. D Benedict. Oh, these are the three shapes that I've done so far. I've done some of these that are finished enameled, waiting for Andrew to work on. Um, but I just started these. The butterfly was hard. You can, if you look really hard, you can see this lobe is not the same as this lobe because I had to saw this one off. And my your sawing is my sawing is not perfect. It doesn't look terrible though. No, that looks good. You wouldn't tell if I didn't. But you know what? I got you know I have a speaker for that. It's called a Sharpie. Yeah, I probably should have done that. But I, I was not good at controlling the saw yet. I haven't used a jeweler saw in a long time. So cutting off this little piece here was like, that was easy. I did that a few times. You can see the easier ones for me, I did a few of them. I think I have three or four of those ginkgo leaves. You did a good job and I'm proud of you. Thanks. So there's what I did. Now I got to go get the kiln on. I meant to tell you to turn on the kiln when you got here and I forgot. So the kiln's going to take a good hour to wake up. So you can make some more ginkgo leaves. <laughs> I I maybe can. Maybe, maybe can. can. Um, maybe, maybe. We do have to look at the hydraulic press though, because the thing's not working. The what? Gauge. Huh? The gauge doesn't work. Oh wow. I figured it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't actually matter. We're not going crazy. But yeah. Julius, a beautiful right? job, William. Gauge worked before. So Marianne's making fun of your butterfly. You're a very... lopsided butterfly. It is lopsided. Oh, it is lopsided. Bless its heart, its little we busted heart. We do not make fun of physical appearances on this show. <laughs> Bless its little heart. Oh, that's okay. It'll be my butterfly, Marianne. You don't give me. Oh, uh, the crying times. He's just joking, y'all. One, two. <laughs> Um, I'm kind of getting a little bit of PTSD because that's how I used to get my spankings when I was little. Um, we used to have to count them out. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was random. People like, ooh, two, four, six. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. June says, love those ginkgo leaves. June likes your lop sided ginkgo leaves no the ginkgo leaves weren't lopsided nothing nothing Did you say something? no <laughs> we're talking about lopsided again shh, 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 shh. we're body positive two four <laughs> six eight ten okay, I'm a little lopsided. twelve i'm definitely lopsided y'all <laughs> especially being around all the young people this weekend, I was like, I, I feel a little bit uh, lumpy. Oh, wow, whatever. All right. So basically, I'm going to string up 12 more beads, and then I'm going to hook it into this one. And then I'm almost done, y'all. Two hours later. Uh-oh, it's like the soup Nazi. Uh, and that's actually true. Marianne was talking about how they, they pump the fluid to get the wings out. You know, there is this thing about um, struggle. And I know that this sounds terrible. Nobody wants to struggle. Everybody wants the easy way. But the thing about the struggle with a butterfly is that it allows them to gain strength in, a, in their wings. And allows them to be able to pump the fluid in the wings to make them expand. So if you see a butterfly is struggling out of a chrysalis, it's tempting to like help it, but by helping it, you're actually harming it. So, cause then it won't be able to fly and then it will get eaten by a predator, which speaking of eaten by a predator, some of the moths, they have this, this uh, taste in their blood, I guess. And it's like, it makes the hawks spit it, or the birds spit it out. So it's kind of interesting if you think about it.
Um, I'm not count. Jermaine says, are you counting the crimp bead as the bead? I'm not. I could have, and that would probably be the smarter thing. But because I've, um, because I've done this so that it's spaced out every time, even though it's a little bit off on each of them, it's, or, or even though it's a little off because of the crimp tube, um, it's going to be off on all of the, the sides because I've spaced it out. Um, so it kind of built, it's a built in redundancy that way. So two, four. Now, if I did it where I, if I did it smaller, particularly, and um, if I did it smaller and um, I was doing it kind of like how I did this, where there's only one crimp tube. Um, attachment and we would uh, you know have less than um, then I would probably use that crimp tube count it as the crimp tube as a bead um, so two four six so that's a good idea Jermaine see we're we're learning together all right so I'm down to the wire y'all it's coming maybe it's coming eventually one hour and 36 minutes later and we have one thing done um all right one two three four five and six i hear him pumping up the hydraulic press in the back there and then i'm gonna get that crimp tube and put that crimp tube in And then I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my pliers. This is a good, good um, example of why the pliers are helpful because I can maneuver this and I don't have to hold it. And then that way I can put all of my, my pressure on this side, which is a shorter side. I'm not going to let go of it to show you because then the beads will fling everywhere. But this is a good way, uh, example of when you need when uh, pliers are more helpful so you don't end up stringing off the beads everywhere. And then all you have to do is just pull this close like so. And then close that up and trim it and then you're done. What? We made a sculpture, y'all. What do y'all think? Now you can add sculpture to your resume. What do y'all think about Sculptor? You made a sculpture, y'all. Or actually, I made it, but we're all in this together, right? Um, and I think if I use fewer beads, it would be um, a little bit tighter. But that actually holds its shape. Um, and the cool thing is, is that if you wanted to link into this, you could link into that and do... Like this is just a necklace off to the side, but you could attachments like that. And I think it would be cool if you made smaller one of these. And um, I think also if I put and did the crimp covers, it would cinch this up and make it tighter um and then by making it slightly tighter it would um create a little bit more sturdiness in this um so yeah i think it's cool it's pretty sturdy um and the cool thing is is that if you wanted to you could go back over and add to it some more because i think you there is enough room that it looks like in this bead that you could run another wire through this. So if you wanted to connect these and do things in another kind of cool sculptural way, um, you could, because you can fit three comfortably. More than that, I don't think it's gonna happen. But if you wanted to branch this out even more, you could do that. Or if you wanted to do like reinforce it with smaller loops to make it tighter, 
and build this structure up to make it more tight, you could go from here to here or, you know, here to here um, and build in e like uh, support systems for that, if that makes sense. So I think it's a cool thing. I hope you all enjoyed this. But you could do all kinds of things with this. So you're basically, like June said, you're working with geometric shapes. Um, and it's, it's a cool idea, I think. And it's also really strong because you're using the flexible beading wire. So what I'm going to do off camera, because I doubt you all want to see me count beads again, um, is I'm going to make some ribs for this structure that will, um, somebody asked how tall it is. It is this many, so three inches, about three inches. I'm gonna do some small ones off camera and I'm gonna, or do you want, do you wanna see experiment time times two? Or do you want me to experiment off camera? Are you like bored to death? Or do you want me to keep going? I guess I, I can, I'll, I'll do this. I'll just start and if y'all are bored to death, then I'll see the numbers drop and then I'll stop. Or I'll just keep going. I don't know, we'll just experiment. All right, so I'm gonna measure off maybe 20 something inches of this flexible beading wire. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. So I'm gonna string up one bead, one big bead like this, and then I'll string up, I'm gonna need another two of these. Um, I'm gonna string up maybe four, let's try four of these so that it will be tight, nice and compact. Maybe six. We'll see. Six or four. We'll see. Is that give enough room? Let's do six. So we'll do six on each side. And I'm working in even numbers, and that's because it's a little bit easier to figure out. Um, sometimes when you start dividing up odd numbers, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, and by adding the other bigger beads, you are making it bigger. So just keep that in mind. And I mean, you can use this for jewelry, but you can also use it like some of y'all are saying for like votive candles or something, but really it's just a technique. So, um, you can do anything. Um, so there you go. When Ben, oh, I'm, Julie says I'm sticking around. Cynthia, store cool stuff. Dressing up them glasses. Yeah, that could be fun. That'd be like the most bougie party. If somebody made me a beaded drink thing, I would be like, I, I've ha I have arrived, right? I've, I'm finally amongst the most fancy. I used to make wine charms for drinks, and I thought that was fancy. Normally, we have what's called a red solo cup and um, a Sharpie, and that is how fancy we are. Um, so that's to say not fancy at all. All right, so six more on this side. Two, three, four, five, and six. Um, as William mentioned, sometime in our lives, if you want to, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube, that would be great um, because it's nice. We're trying to do stuff there. Um, and that should start, in theory, that'll start up more once I get back from Tucson. We'll do some more 
more YouTube specific things. Two, four, five, six. We're not going to abandon Facebook completely, but you know, changing times for changing times. Um, so I'm going to go and do this. It's this basically what we did in that bracelet. And then I'm going to go and string this up. Oh my gosh. Are we inventors, y'all? Are we, did we just make something new? Probably not. Somebody's probably like, well, my Aunt Matilda, they, they invented this process back in 1925. Um, but I think it's something new, but I could be making this up. I've never seen anybody do it, so don't come at me with your pitchforks if you if Aunt Matilda is still around. Two, four, six. Clem said, make smaller ones. That's what I'm doing. I'm making a smaller one. I'm going to see how it works. But I'm trying something different. So I did the first one, the first big one, which I'm going to reinforce because I don't, I want that not to be weeble wobbly. I want it to be like strong, strong like bull. Um, and um, yeah, so I want that to be strong. So I'm going to um, add some ribs to that. And then Bonnie says, you could sell these at Tucson. I don't think so. Uh, maybe. I'm going to, I don't know. If be like, hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm not the, well, maybe. You never know. I probably won't have enough time to make very many, though. That's a thing. Um, we're going to be doing some enameling adventures. So I've got some, some secret tricks up my sleeve. I'm going to do some painted components too. Um, so we'll see. Also, now that the video is kind of like out there in the universe, um, people can make their own if they want. So two, four, six. Anybody want to try to make one of these along with us? Um, Bunny says, add a feather. There you go. Um, so I'm going to add, how many more do I have to add? Six on this side. Just make it, Bonnie. You can do it. I'm, I'm not afraid. Um, so one... Two, three, four, five, and six. People are like, what's he doing now? Again, some more. It's like little, like Oliver Twist. He's, or is it Oliver Twist? What's the one that, the one who's like, please, sir, may I have some more? I can hear from here William sighing. That's not the way. <laughs> um, so I've got this. I And we're going to do um, two. I guess you don't necessarily have to have four. But I think four will, um, will give a sturdier... Um, connection. If I do that, I'm going to need some more seed beads. So I'm going to go grab some real quick. Now the seed beads, we don't um, have any online store um, yet. I don't think we will, but if you want these, just let us know and we'll order some in for you. So I'm going to just keep going. And the, this smaller size, I think, is a little bit more satisfying because the bigger one kind of seems weeble wobbledy. 
Um, but this small size, yo. And you could probably even make it smaller. I don't know. I'm bewitched by the tiny thing, so maybe that's that's what it is. Bonnie says, I love the color combo. Thanks. Mixed metals, y'all. Mixed metals. I can't believe that almost 40 of you are still watching this. Like, is it, are you, like, glutton for punishment? No. I'm curious to see how this will work out, honestly, myself. That's why I keep going. Okay, so three more. One, two, three, four. Um... Yeah, so I had a good time this weekend. I haven't, I wrote about it on Instagram, but I haven't written about it on Facebook. But I had a really lovely time over the weekend. It was nice to hang out with friends and make things in my mind. Um, symposiums are not, they more like tell you stuff. It's more like uh, lectures. So if you, um, you know, not everybody likes that. Um, I think it's fun. It's almost like being in school again. It made me want to go and get my MFA, and then I just finally finished paying off my student loans from the first time. So I was like, mm, I don't know. All right, six more on this side. I think about it sometimes. Marion says, I am trying to imagine an M product. Oh, good. Good. Michelle says, so are we. Linda says, I love learning. Keep going. Vanya says, school should be free. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, I don't know school, so. Two, four, five. Um, but yeah, I would love to go back and get my MFA, especially around so many creative people. I went in their studios and I was like so jealous. Have you ever been in somebody else's studio and you get filled with covetousness? Well, I had to combat my feelings of covetousness because, um, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, look at all the steaks, y'all. I could be making bowls right now. All the bowls. All right. So we're going to, I'm almost done with this side piece. Um, isn't it funny how this is going so much faster? I guess because I'm not having to count as much. And we actually know what we're doing this time, kind of. So it's going faster. Is that making, that makes sense. We did it once, and so now we're doing it faster. And also, we don't have to stop and crimp so much. So this might be the way, y'all. This way, that they'd be like, doesn't he know how to do anything else? That's all he knows how to do is that weave in back and forth? No, y'all. That's it. That's all I know how to do. But I, th you know, sometimes you do something and then you start thinking about it and then it doesn't, it's like, um, it's like a song you can't get out of your head. You're like, oh, maybe, you know, I don't know. Does that make sense? Like you get an idea in your head and then you kind of just have to work through it. Otherwise, it's just going to be stuck there and then you're just going to think about it and think about it until... Your dreams are infused by it, and all you can think about is that one thing torturing your mind for all time. All right, so I'm going to do this side a little bit different because I have to close it up, right? So I have to, and I left myself plenty of wire. I cut off about 20 inches of this uh, flexible beading wire. So, um, so there's room on this. All right. So I'm going to, I'm almost there. Two, four, six. Cynthia says, I am jealous over your cottage. Well, you can move up. You can share it. Two, four, six. 
when this is I would love to see it with turquoise beads and copper. Julie says one idea seems to turn into another for me. And then this is I get tool envy all the time. Yeah, I I do too. Um, you know, I was thinking about this and I didn't go to school for metals. I went to school for painting. So um, seeing some of the stuff that the undergrads are making, it blows my mind. And it's because they have time with equipment. And I think that that's one of those things like you have to make time and make space in your life for new things to evolve. Otherwise, um, if you don't have time and space, it's just not gonna gel, right? So. Um, and I'm gonna take Jermaine's idea. So I'm gonna give you credit, Jermaine. Um, let me see how this is gonna go. All right, so I'm going to take one of these off. I'm going to take three of these off and put it on this side. Two of these off. And I'm going to use one. I'm going to use that crimp tube as the space. What? And then I'm going to get that. <clears throat> I see a lot of people are making comments, um, but sometimes I'm not able to read them all. But I'm trying, but all right. So I've got this and I'm gonna put this in here. I cut off too much. I'm always cutting off too much. Now I'm all like rich and spoiled, but whatever. Right. So I've got this, I'm gonna pull this in here. I'm gonna get them pliers out, y'all, because they're smaller than my fingertips. And grab it and go. And then close it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna make it nice and tight, y'all. Not too tight, though. But tight enough so that it stands up. When this is, do you ever get in the zone in your design all night? Drives me that drives me crazy when I do that, but I love it. Yeah, I get in the zone often, and I like it. It makes me feel good on the inside. Oh, Boulder Dash. Well, y'all, I messed up, and I crimped it. Fiddlesticks. In theory, I was supposed to connect it right here, but then I got too excited and stopped paying attention. And so here we go. Maybe I'll do a five side. It's gonna be like a, what do they call it? A dodecahedron or whatever. That's not gonna be a very stable shape, but that's all right. Um, so in order not to have to take that all apart, we're going to do a new fun technique where we make stuff up as we go along, since this is the theme for today. Make stuff up as we go along day. So let's put this. So when you're doing this, pay attention, and then you don't have to do this. But maybe who knows? We're inventors. We're pioneer. We're going to uh, do cool things. So I know that since I have this, this side done, I'm going to need six seed beads, a bead, another six seed beads, and then this will hook into this side. All right. Um, Linda says, just take the one apart and keep going. There wouldn't be enough wire then. Um, so, so no, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna bootleg this way. 
So that's three, four, and five and six. And then we're going to put one of these beads on. And then we're going to add six more. Actually, let me add it to this side as we go. That way I don't mess myself up. Because, see, I got messed up the last time. I got distracted talking about the concepts of time and space. And then and then look. But this could be the cool, next cool thing. This is going to be what all the cool kids do. I don't know. But I think this is a cool idea if you play around with it. And you can use different beads. Like, imagine this with, like, dagger beads in between. Like in the very middle, instead of doing six, you could do five, but have that one middle B be that two, four, five. You could do it where it's, um, yeah, I think it could be cool. Just playing around with the different beads and then you'll get different effects, right? So I'm going to, this is going to hook into this one. So I need at least six on this side. I'm going to give myself a little bit more extra on this side. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Bonnie says, I can't get into the book for the book club group. Oh, well, you know, some, you're not going to like every book. Um, and you can make something based on your dislike of the book. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, there was a book that we read, somebody picked about a child molester. I did not like that book. I still made a project. Um, so I think that that's one of the things is like, you don't always have to um, like a certain thing for it to be of use. And also, if you don't, um, somebody was like, oh, I can't get into it. And then, you know, that's fine. It doesn't hurt me. I like it, but um, that's because I'm charmed. And also, the other reason why I like it is because when I was growing up, there weren't a lot of LGBTQIA stories. So... Um, I got bewitched by it. All right, so I strung up three beads on that one side. I'm going to string up two on the other side. And then I'm going to string up one crimp tube. Thanks, Jermaine. Um, and I'm going to use that as the place of the beads. I'm, I think if I, since I only have so few bead crimp tubes, it doesn't take up, like, it doesn't have that kind of built-in redundancy as in the larger piece. So that space does end up throwing off designs. Um, so, yeah. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to... I'm I've, I'm cinched up, y'all. So the... It, it works. Second time's the charm, maybe. And then we're going to just trim it. All right. This is kind of fun. It's like we're making building blocks. All right. So this is the shape that we made. It's kind of a... Uh, what do they call that? Pentagon. And then I'm going to just do the same where I link it in between six in between each of these. And then at some point we'll do where it meets. And then it will create that shape. So we're going to have all these shapes, these geometric shapes. And maybe that one can live inside this one. And the cool thing is that it's collapsible. So if you wanted to do... I don't know if any of you are into sacred geometry, but if you are, 
this might be something to add to your repertoire. Because look how cool that looks. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. So, I don't know, y'all. Do y'all like that? Or does it look like dog poop? I think it looks pretty cool. And it could have a valuable application. But I don't know. Maybe I'm biased. Here I am thinking I'm an inventor. Uh, so we'll see. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I cut off about oh, six inches of flexible beading wire. I strung it up on one of these side beads here. And then I'm going to use that as my anchor point. So I'm going to string up another six here, six of these copper beads. And we'll see how it works. You know, it could be cool because um, it could have like a little window effect. So, you know, I think that could be interesting. Two, four, five, six. Two, four, five, six. And I think that's another thing is like just because something doesn't work out the first time doesn't mean that it's necessarily bad. I know sometimes we, we get into this thing where we want everything we make to be super successful. Um, and I think that that's one of those things where we're constantly being driven towards perfection. And one of the things that I was reading um, about was in some Native American jewelry, they purposely will leave a bead out or add extra bead or change up a bead. Um, and it's because they acknowledge that th nothing is perfect. And I thought that was really cool because so often we are driven towards this idea of perfection. Um, and it's not necessarily the best. Like it's um, one of the uh, presenters that um, was at the symposium was talking about the imposter syndrome and um, how, you know, we feel like we're imposters or and you're like, who, me? I, I'm, you want to hear from me? Um, and I think that, you know, it's one of those things where it's a real thing. It's a real problem. Um, and instead of, and it comes back to that idea that everything has to be kind of neat and tidy and that, um, our, but in reality, artistic practice, in my experience, is rarely neat and tidy. It's just like life. Um, you can plan for things to happen and have every, all the best intentions for that thing to happen the way you think it'll happen. But then all of a sudden, you know, you're faced with the reality of the situation, which is that um, it's not meant to be. You know, so I think it's interesting when we, you know, we embrace the fact that there are going to be things that may not have gone according to plan. Life rarely does, in my experience. But if you kind of are open to things, then um, you'll be surprised when they turn out or the things you learn along the way. It can be as valuable or more valuable than what you originally set out for. Oh, William is. Do you want the jinkos? Color enamel or enamel the same way? Sure. Um, maybe a goldenrod color if we have it. Goldenrod color. Is yeah. On this side, the same. The counter enamel. Or do you want them both goldenrod? I want them one side to be goldenrod. And then the other side to be golden clear. I don't know what golden clear is. Well, we'll find out together. So here's what we've got. We've got this. Um, we've got this. Um, see, y'all are doing book club talk. It's not book club. I guess it could be book club. But some of the people haven't read it. So that's the only thing. Um, or haven't finished. Um, 
So I'm going to string up three beads on this side and then two beads on the other side in a crimp tube. And then we're going to um, um, close this up. And so there you go. Um, Linda says, I've never been in a book club. So we have a book club. You read something, we have a list out, um, and then you read the book, and then you make something inspired by the book, and then we talk about it. All right, so here it is. I'm going to cinch that up fairly tight. I don't actually know where the beginning and the end is. Here we go. And then we take our crimping pliers and then close it up. Um, the butter? Yeah, do it. Punch it, yo. I like it that William's making stuff. It's like my dream come true, finally, after 15 years of being together. All right, here you go. What do you all think about that? It's a little bit weeble wobbly, but once we add the other side, I think it will help. Um, strengthen it. And you could go and do this um, infinity style where you just keep going and going or do different permeations and it's strong enough so that you could make a beaded chain out of this so that if you link this you could create real volume and if you were doing like beaded vessels this might be a good way to create that volume so if I wanted to I could take this and connect these where since these are there's a five here there's one two three four so if we took and we made it so there were four and they kind of fit in there you could do it so that it fits into this piece and then you could connect them that way there's a lot of things and you can also if you wanted to you could um bend this and manipulate it so that if you had an even number of these you could do like you know almost like those um you could do like increases and decreases if that makes any sense like if you were doing those um those fortune tellers from like you know the ones that are like pick a color red blue whatever you could do it so that um on one side you had more and then on the other side you could like push them together and then they could meet in the middle and there's geometry here but i can also see how there's like a botanical um where if you think about like terminate um like petals and different structures like that there's a potential to there's geometry here but there is also the chance that you could do something with like an organic flare. So if you wanted to do like um, leaves or petals on a flower, you know, you could still do that. Vanessa says, I'm going to try it, but mine will never look like that. And you never know, yours could look better since we're, <laughs> since we're figuring it out as we go. Um, good. I'm surprised people are still watching, but because we're, we've already gone past the two hour mark, but, um, you know, I think it's cool. It's not necessarily the most exciting thing because it's not like I'm going to do a hammering and then all of a sudden it, um, it all comes together, you know? And it's like exciting blow by blow action. So um, in that way, it's not that very exciting. But I think, yeah, I think conceptually though, 
there's a lot of meat here. Like there's a lot of ideas that could come out of this. Um, because I think a lot of beadwork is very flat. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but a lot of stuff is very flat. And so thinking about it in a three-dimensional way changes, you know, our relationship with how, you know, how we use the materials that, you know, I use beading wire every day pretty much, but I don't use it in this way every day. So I think there's something to be said about giving yourself permission to think about things in a different way um, and asking yourself, what exactly will this do? Um, you know, like what, what are the possibilities? What, what can we achieve when we have a question? You know, um, you know, we're, we're kind of exploring these ideas um, and these concepts. And once we have those questions, then we can find answers, right? So if we know all the answers ahead of time, then we never really learn anything. But if we ask ourselves, like, what would we, what would it look like if I took this basic concept and built upon it? If I took this weaving back in, for, back and forward, and, um, you know, what would happen? So we're all, wait, two, four, six. We're in this together. We're learning together. How about that? Um, somebody said, could lead to dimensional bead origami. Yeah, maybe. Why not? I think it's one of those things where we don't know, you know, it could be, it could be something interesting where we were we're just at the tipping point of of this. And the cool thing is, is that if I do it and I show it, then somebody else does it and they build upon it and they take it one step further, then it's like a link in a chain, right? So, um, and the strongest chains are the ones with you know, reinforced links. So it's not just about what I'm doing. It's also about how this technique or this idea or concept can kind of grow and change. Um, and um, when people put their own spin on it. So I'm using a very metallic color palette here, but one simple change to completely make this look different is to use a colored beading wire and then use a transparent bead. All of a sudden you have a completely different look. Um, and I think, um, and I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna kind of pause in that, that um, train of thought. But right now I'm putting in, I'm almost ready to close up that bottom loop and it's gotten much more rigid. Um, because it was very loosey goosey at first, but it's starting to two four. Um, it's starting to get stronger, which I think is pretty cool. Um, um, because we have um, the ability. I think that's cool when it gets stronger like that. Um, when it starts to come together as a form you know, and a usable component too. So I think that's interesting. So I'm gonna string up three on this side cause I've got a little bit of X3 or maybe I'll do two on this, three on this side and then two on the other side and the crimp tube and then I'll close it up. In theory I could pull it, um, but sometimes when you weave it through too many beads, it becomes harder to pull. So it's good to get have your tension, um, you know, while you're, you're, you keep your tension while you're doing it. And then you'll, I think you'll be a little bit more successful. So anyway, I'm excited to see this. We're almost there. 
are, are you feeling that pregnant pause before the reveal? The excitement building in a crescendo of, of um, excitement, creative excitement. I don't know if that's, that probably doesn't sound right. So that's cool. And it's relatively sturdy too. Um, so it would be a good thing to build off of, right? If it's sturdy. So you can definitely do things where you take that idea and keep going or not. You know, maybe this isn't your jam. Maybe you're like, I like it flat. Um, I know I do. I usually, generally speaking, I don't do a lot sculpturally like this with beading. But there's an idea here. And we could work this inside maybe. So that you have something, you know, we're playing with volume here and we're moving this around inside. What's that movie with the guy with the pins on his head? Pinhead, Hellraiser. Um, and they have like a toy that's like this. Maybe we won't be opening portals to other dimensions, but um, I think that's a, a neat idea. I like the tighter one, I'm not gonna lie. I think this needs more structure. So I would go back through and add those ribs and make it have a little bit more structure. And then maybe off camera, what I'll do is I'll try different configurations and then we'll put them all together and I'll take a picture of them. I mean, I could keep going, but I think eventually y'all are gonna be like, all right, time for night night. There's 30. There's 28 now. <laughs> you said you're going to go. They start dropping off of that. Um, Facebook user said this would be beautiful hanging like a mobile. Um, Bonnie says, very cool. You are a beating magician. Oh, thanks. Bonnie says, Mike is home with my salad. So it's dinner time. And Julie says, thank you so much. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I really appreciate it. We could not do what we do without all of you. Um, so thank you. Um, I'm going to keep going on my own, um, but I will post a picture on the Allegory Gallery Facebook page sometime tonight with the different shapes that I make. And if you wanna be a part of the troubleshooting uh, if you want to be a troubleshooter and try this out and use the flexible beading wire to make some shapes, um, some sculptural forms, uh, post those in the Allegory Gallery Facebook group. And let me put the link to that. So if you're in the group already, awesome. If you're not in the group, please join because that'll be cool. But I'd love to see your variations and iterations. Oh, oh I was spilling beads everywhere, y'all. Oh, wow. Um, so definitely let me know. And um, yeah, I think it'd be cool if there's a bunch of people working on it all at once. Like this is a star now. Do you see the star? Um. Yeah, I think that's cool. So if you post these, let, I'd love to see. Um, and I think it could be cool. You know, we're all troubleshoot together. Um, Kathleen says, I can see Christmas ornaments. I think I'm thinking, you know, like some pretty like dramatic jewelry. Why not? You know, these are basically big beads, like big, huge beads. So why not do something like 
where you have very architectural kind of sensibilities to them. Like how did these shapes form together? And if you attach these, what, how would they kind of develop into more, more shapes or more structures? Like how would these work if you then took and built upon it? Um, you know, you could take um, this as a skeleton, like an exoskeleton, and then take the the uh, beading wire that we're more used to, like a fire line or, or whatever, and then go through and do stuff on top of this or in between this or use this as like the skeleton um, and then like you could do things that are super sturdy that would look, you know, light and airy, but still have that volume and form. So just something to think about in your spare time. Now that it was in my brain, now it shall be in all of your brains too, maybe. Uh, Michelle says the big one looks like a drum. Yeah, it could be. But yeah, what do y'all think? You like that? Okay, I'm going to go. I'm not going to flip it around. You saw my face earlier, if you tuned in earlier. If not, oh well. Um, just picture it, bald-headed, half-Asian. All right, have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much for everything, and we'll see you tomorrow, live at five-ish. See ya. <laughs>